Chris, the show all about you and your ideas. We said to the people of Great Britain, if you think you're a genius, email us, get in touch, and we will give you the chance to prove it. We were delighted by the response. 10,000 of you got in touch. 10,000. That's impressive numbers. But I'll be honest, it could be better. There are nearly 60 million people in this country. <laughs> that means that 99.98% of you have failed to get in touch. <laughs> Do you know what 99.98% of nearly 60 million is? It's nearly 60 million. <laughs> of course, looking on the bright side, 10,000 emails is a lot to work with, and I'm sure we're going to hear some genius ideas tonight. To decide which ideas make the grade, we have secured the services of a very special guest. He's an actor with an almost unique range. He seems to be just as comfortable in blockbuster action movies like Pirates of the Caribbean and Tomorrow Never Dies as he is in independent fare like Glen Gary Glen Ross. On stage, he's tackled the classics of Chekhov and Shakespeare to critical acclaim, but is just as likely to turn his hand to musicals. Really, when you read through his CV, it leaves you wondering, is there anything he wouldn't do? <laughs> it's a theory we've tested tonight, and he's here, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome the genius, Jonathan Price. <laughs> Jonathan, thank you very much for joining us. Obviously, we, we know you're a genius. I mean, your, your CV tells us that much. Any recent genius ideas you'd like to share? I'm, I'm absolutely hopeless at uh, texting, um, predictive text. Mm -hmm. But I thought it would be absolutely marvellous if we could have predictive speech. speech. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I mean, I don't know how it would work. Well, I haven't invented it yet. <laughs> When I do, it uh, probably will mountainous be. Yeah. <laughs> What's your least genius moment, perhaps? When I was a drama student and living in Brixton, I woke up in the middle of the night and I had a, a mouse on my head. <laughs> and I didn't have a mouse trap, didn't have any poison. I got a bucket of water and half filled it. Got a, a ruler, wooden ruler, put, poised one end on a pile of books and the other end poised over the water and put a piece of cheese on the end. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is true. I put a piece of cheese on the end of the ruler, hoping the mouse would walk the plank. And, uh... <laughs> but he never did. I, well, I, think I can't understand it. A man who improvises his own mousetrap is, is yeah. the perfect guest for the yeah. show, obviously. Good. Thank um, you. Let's see if we can unearth some more geniuses to keep you company, Jonathan. Our first idea comes from Nick Woodhead of Wesley in Devon. Um, dear genius, I think shoes should have weighing scales built into them <laughs> uh, with a little readout on the toe cap. That way, people losing weight can keep an eye on how they're doing all the time. <laughs> Already, I love it. You don't strike me as a man who needs to watch his weight. Because there is that thing with actors of sort of like the, you know, I know you've worked with De Niro uh, in Brazil and things, and, and famous, he's the kind of man who would have to pile on 25 pounds for a role yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Have you ever had to do that kind yeah. of thing? Yeah, all the time. Every really? part I play, I claim. <laughs> <laughs> I claim to have put weight on, especially for the role. Yeah. <laughs> I said that about when I did Evita with, uh, what's her name? Madonna? Madonna. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but I like this idea that you could, uh, I mean, it could go further, couldn't it? You could have meters on you that would uh, tell everything else that was going on in your body. You could have um, a temperature thing, you know. Just so, like a thermometer. Yeah, a thermometer, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that when people say, is it hot in here or is it me, you go, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> and farts. Did you fart? Oh, oh that was you. <laughs> we all know that. Right? <laughs> Orgasms. <laughs> How would you fit an orgasm into a shoe? <laughs> I think he's really thinking shoes. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, Thorin, our prop man, loved this idea and he said, yeah, I can do this, scales in shoes, not a problem. Uh, and he made a really lovely pair. You probably noticed actually at the top of the show I was wearing them when I came on. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'll, I'll show you them now, I'm wearing them now. Um, they're really... <laughs> I was wearing them at the top of the show, I think you... <laughs> you would have seen that, wouldn't you, obviously. Um, <laughs> they're a bit bulky. Uh, for me. There's actually a, there's a pair for you inside the bottom of your Is chair, it? Jonathan, if you want to try them. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's slightly depressing, I find, because if I look at one of them, I sort of lean that way. 
So I look at that one and it says I'm 11 and a half stone there, and then I look at that one and it says I'm 11 stone there, and I'm 22 and a half stone, according <laughs> I'm just over 14 stone there. You've done the musicals, obviously. You were, uh, <laughs> I can yeah. tell that from the way you came yeah. down that stairs. <laughs> so, um... I'm 11 and a half and wobbly. <laughs> Let's take our chairs again. If you... <laughs> in fairness, there is a degree of exercise involved oh, in yes, wearing them. Yeah. I mean, the idea, presumably, these are meant to help you lose weight. Well, maybe for the people wearing them, that's fine. But for me, personally, who actually finds people talking about their diets very boring, I can see people coming, and I can hide. <laughs> <laughs> the big problem I had with them is, is the message they give you in the short term. If I was to eat this apple, my weight would go up by how much this apple weighs, basically. So it's going to go up by 5.3 ounces. However, if I eat this chocolate bar, <laughs> I'm only going to weigh 1.4 ounces more. <laughs> In the short term, your scale shoes are telling me that this is better for me. <laughs> and I think we all know that the apple is better for me. And that is why I like your shoes. <laughs> well, I think we're, we're heading for a decision time, really. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So. <laughs> I liked it as soon as I heard about it. They'd obviously need scaling down. <laughs> <laughs> like this audience, if they could behave like that. Uh, but I think it's on its way to being... Genius. Genius. I didn't want to mention it while he was here, but he, he's a bit chunky, isn't he? <laughs> he is, absolutely. <laughs> OK, well, let's see what our next idea brings. It comes from Oxford, and their name is Penny Davidman. Dear Genius, I think they should use appropriate regional accents when reading out the weather forecast, so you know which bit to listen to. <laughs> I think, you, I think you've, you've played a weatherman, haven't you, Jonathan, in the past? Have I? My Fair Lady? <laughs> Professor Higgins? A weatherman. The rain in Spain? The rain in Spain, yeah. Rain, so I not... knew we'd get there in the end. Yes, yes. <laughs> I have, indeed, yes. You, know, you live in London, presumably? I do. Yeah. That would be one of the confusing areas for this, because London has more than one accent. I think you'd have to take Queen's English for London. Oh! <laughs> I live in the East End, and I'm not sure that's such a good idea. <laughs> Are you thinking um, that you would coach weathermen in accents or coach accent experts in meteorology? Well, I think Good probably point. you get the people who can speak rather than people who know about weather. I mean, we seem to be going along that way anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Got yeah. a lot of attitude. We, yeah. <laughs> we both marked her card at yeah. the same time. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, as an actor, you, you've handled various accents. I have. Your yeah. time. You're, you're Welsh, by the way. I am Welsh. And you don't sound Welsh to me? There's... I do to me. OK. <laughs> oh, you'd... I have a very subtle Welsh accent. OK, well, yeah. it's, it's, it's very, very subtle. Yeah. <laughs> You've played Fagin, which is sort of Cockney. Yeah. He's got the English gentleman thing going on, the Argentinian dictator. Yeah. Well, uh, he, he didn't speak. Did he not...? He only sang. Yeah. It was historically accurate that at that time <laughs> in Argentina, people only sang. They never spoke. That's why they made a musical out of it, I imagine. It was, it was, it was a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> Should we put this to the test, then? Do you want to try and do the weather? No. <laughs> it's a shame, because we, we've got a weather map for you. Do you want to come in, mate? We can give it a go. Oh. 
Do you want me to do it? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I'd love you to do it. I... <laughs> but not. Um, I'll, I'll start in Scotland. Yeah, go. Like. And, and yeah. can we make sure it's the east of the Scotland? The east. Yeah. 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 Where's Glasgow? Uh, Glasgow will be over this side somewhere. In oh, Edinburgh let's make sure side. it's the west then. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the one I can do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can uh, go so... over there a little. For oh, a little, nice. Uh, to, nice. For the Highlands and Islands. Hello, you know. I'm not there. <laughs> but I'll come down here for Glasgow. Well, there's, uh, it's very, very cloudy in Glasgow at the moment with sunny intervals. Uh, lovely. Oh, it's Chick Murray and Maisie. Uh, <laughs> and over here, over here, we come down here and, we, and uh, there is sunshine. Ah, the nose. There's sunshine in, uh, in Yorkshire now. You know, <laughs> it's lovely. It's lovely. Yorkshire now. Okay. But there's, uh, there's lightning striking over there in Liverpool, you know. <laughs> and uh, I, I get the brollies out, cos, uh, you know, we're, it, we normally have a sunny disposition in Liverpool, but it's going to be cloudy now with a bit of lightning. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no. And then we move down here to... Uh, oh, oh, across here. And we go to North Wales, where it's, there's still lightning and it's dark, dark clouds in North Wales. <laughs> but if you want to go down to South Wales, it gets lovely down there, now. <laughs> See, there's tiny, there's a bit of lightning over there, and then we go over here, and you go to London. All right? <laughs> but over here, <laughs> there's thunder! Well, it, it works, and to yeah. be honest, Penny, I think he might go for you because he might get a job out of this. <laughs> yeah. So maybe we'll, we'll, we'll take okay. our chairs and, and continue to think about this a little bit. I mean, I. Uh, Maybe we actually should be interested in other people's weather. Yeah. Maybe I'm at home and I'm, I'm planning a trip to Wales and then the yeah. weather comes on and it says there's a typhoon hitting Wales but I don't listen because it's a Welsh accent and I find it confusing. Yeah. <laughs> then I go to Wales and get hit by a typhoon. But at least you'd know which bit to listen out for if you knew you were going to Wales. You'd tune into the Welsh accent. Yeah. yeah. And, then you would... <laughs> and then you wouldn't go anyway. <laughs> You're a son of Wales. How, how could you? Uh, sir, yes, indeed. Yes. I love Wales. <laughs> OK. It, it could go either way. It's... It could, couldn't it? Absolutely. That's the point of the game, I think. Yep. <laughs> Jonathan, over to you. To be genius or not to be genius? <laughs> genius. <laughs> OK, uh, Jonathan, b before we move on, uh, I want to reassure you that Team Genius really have tried to offer you ideas that at least have genius potential. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, it's actually going quite well so far. Uh, but I've got one of the bins from Genius HQ here. Uh, this is where the ideas go to die, basically. <laughs> it is. I don't know what's in here, genuinely. Right. It's, it's just some, some ideas we've discarded. Feel free to take a look. And hopefully it might sort of make you think more kindly on, on the ideas we do show you. <laughs> Coffee mate should be made to include actual coffee. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I got one size fits all wheelbarrows. <laughs> you can see why we're not discussing it on the show, sir. Backup shoes, a spare shoe in the heel of each shoe in case you lose your... <laughs> in case you lose your shoes. With knife crime on the increase, I think all vegetables should come pre-sliced. <laughs> no one need ever own a knife again. 25-hour moisturiser, in case you want to lie in. <laughs> Bikes for mics. All people called Mike should get a bike, and all people called Michael should get a bicycle. I love roller coasters, but I think they should build one near Gateshead. <laughs> this is astounding. Um, rent a house. Houses you can rent. <laughs> a separate emergency number for hoax calls. We get, we get so much <laughs> madness sent to us. It is a remarkable thing. Uh, however, maybe that will make you look kindly on yep. our next idea. Let's see. He has travelled from Liverpool and his name is David Bateman. 
Dear genius, my idea is to make the Isle of Wight symmetrical. <laughs> this exciting and forward-looking project will give an immense boost to the tourist industry at a surprisingly small cost and with the destruction of only one major town. <laughs> Ventnor. <laughs> OK. Wow. So have you spent time on the Isle of Wight yourself? I've not actually been there myself, but I you have... You haven't been? <laughs> I, but I have done a fairly thorough a survey of the matter and I've done research on this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you avoided it purely on its lack of symmetricality? Well, I'll certainly go there after it's been made symmetrical. <laughs> I should think the people of Ventnor, the major town that's been destroyed, would welcome you with uh, open arms. <laughs> well, uh, they probably will, because the thing is that uh, the people of Ventnor will be moved to a much nicer place, which we'll be making for them. OK. Um, I think we, we should have a bit of context on this. Are you, are you yeah. familiar with what the Isle of Wight looks like? I have no idea. I don't even know where it is. OK. <laughs> Uh, we should have a picture of, of the Isle of Wight. You can see it's sort of, you know... Oh! ...sort of symmetrical. Is it true that, that symmetrical things are inherently more appealing? Is, is that...? Well, I think in this case it certainly would be. Um, the, Isle of Wight, the Isle of Wight does have a bit of a problem with being considered boring, and I think uh, this, this will greatly improve it. As you can see, at the bottom right, it's got that rather awkward bit, sort of bulging out there in an unsightly sort of way. Uh, that's Bentner there. Uh, <laughs> so, so what we need to do is scoop up Ventnor and uh, move it up and to the right a bit and stick it where uh, Benbridge Point is at the moment. At, at the right. OK. Uh, simple as that, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we can do a little test to see if things are better symmetrically. If you stare down at lens, we should be able to see a, a sort of symmetrical Jonathan Price. <laughs> oh, try and get your... That's Paul Daniels. <laughs> oh, my life, it is. Now that's magic. <laughs> right. I don't know. Are, are you? Where's he gone? Where's he gone? Here I am. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! Don't do that. <laughs> oh, hello. That's revolting. Um... <laughs> I don't think you're taking this idea quite seriously enough, actually. <laughs> I think I'm taking it very seriously indeed. <laughs> I was going to suggest that if you make this symmetrical Isle of Wight, you then only let twins live on it. <laughs> and one has to live on the east and one has to live on the west. Yeah. That's just stupid. <laughs> yes. Where you've got... At the moment, you've got just one set of needles, right, on the uh, western point of the island. Yeah. We're going to make a needles east as well. <laughs> so, potentially double the number of tourists. Potentially. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. I want you to be a genius, David, I really do. And we want your idea to succeed. Which is why we took your idea to an advertising agency. Oh. And we I'm said, intrigued. look, if we made the Isle of Wight symmetrical, would you come up with a pitch for an advert that would sell this idea? And they came up with a short list of, of one person they thought was good for the job. And I couldn't believe it, it was Jonathan Price. <laughs> so, if you don't mind, Jonathan, uh, take it away. Hi, I'm Jonathan Price. And, like most people, I value symmetry above all else. <laughs> what could be more appealing than a moth? <laughs> or a butterfly? <laughs> or wing mirrors? <laughs> or a gay wedding cake? <laughs> Now, the Isle of Wight is symmetrical too. So, if you're looking for a holiday destination that has world-beating attractions and symmetricality, but you're not particularly bothered by the world-beating attractions, <laughs> then the Isle of Wight is the place for you. Remember, the Isle of Wight. Because Crete's just a bit too wonky. On that basis, I'm going there for a holiday, if it ever comes to exist. Yeah. Jonathan Price, is the symmetrical Isle of Wight genius or not? Did you say you were from Liverpool? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, it's got to be... Genius! <laughs> genius! 
it's a good night, it's going well. But we do have one more idea for you, Jonathan, and it is from Juliet Shreve, who's also from Liverpool. Dear Genius, we have shops such as the Bear Factory where children are taken for a treat to have a bear made as they watch. So, why not a chain of shops where parents can take naughty children to see their favourite teddy being dismantled? <laughs> I would call these shops abattoirs. <laughs> oh. Do you have children, Jonathan? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, three. And have yeah. you ever sort of willfully tried to mentally scar them? <laughs> no, not them, but I... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> there are other things. My teddy bear, oddly enough. Really? When I was very little, and I used to uh, throw it up in the air, and as it came down... <laughs> 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 so I'm with you. Um, do, do you have children? I don't children? know. Is that because they've been taken away? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I am actually a student teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Are you really? Yes. Well, what do you tell kids about the tooth fairy? If they don't give them the teeth, they're going to punch their lights out? Or... <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> It might. Um, we've got a sort of our version of an abattoir. Is that what you're calling them? Yeah. Okay. Well, we've got an abattoir. Join me at the abattoir, if you will, Mr. Abattoir. Bright. Um, oh, the first thing we thought you might do to hurt uh, a stuffed toy. Uh, <laughs> uh, we've got a teddy on a rack. That's all I like it. Is that the kind of thing you had in mind? Yeah, that yeah. Kind of thing? yeah. You turn that one inwards yeah. and I'll turn that one out. We'll see how far the teddy can. <laughs> Impulsive, isn't it? <laughs> oh, oh, God. God. He escaped oh. with basically lost a leg <laughs> along the way. Yeah. If a child loved that, yeah. what, what do you think the effect would be? Well, hopefully it would have quite a big impact. <laughs> <laughs> it would last the rest of their lives so they never get into trouble again. It would prevent crime in the future. <laughs> would it really? <laughs> If you chop a teddy's leg off, everyone knows you can stitch it back on again and it's repairable. So we thought proper destruction was, was the real punishment on this. So we, we have got a wood chipper. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think when you read your idea the first time and you felt that sort of frisson of panic in tonight's audience, that's because they know we asked tonight's audience to bring their teddies with them. <laughs> Sorry. So, c everyone who's brought a teddy, and don't lie, now that you know there's a wood chipper. <laughs> can you please uh, hold your teddy in the air if you've brought your teddy with you? Oh, wow. OK. Um, thank you so much. I'm slightly put off by the bondage teddy <laughs> in the top corner. Can you just throw that down here? OK. That's, that's a teddy who's just going to enjoy <laughs> this, isn't it? I mean... <laughs> that's... I'm not letting that happen, but, um... <laughs> Can I have a look at your teddy? What's your name? My name's Jess. Your name's Jess? Yeah. And, and the His teddy's... name's George. He has a name? Yeah. Do you love him? Yeah. Would you like to come and join me on the stage? <laughs> come there. This is Jonathan Price. Meet Jonathan Price. Hello. Hello. He's a world-famous actor. This is Jess. She's got a teddy. Um, <laughs> Jonathan, would you like to hold the mic and, and you can sure. maybe offer some counselling to Jess? <laughs> OK, OK, uh, don't worry, we'll be all right. <laughs> be all right. It was George, was it? Yeah. OK. I'm going <laughs> to... Put him in, in the wood chipper, OK? Do you really love him? Mm. <laughs> I'm going to press the on button. Are you ready? That's George. <laughs> you want a bit of that? Uh, yeah. I'm How are you feeling? Gutted. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it couldn't actually. But how, how bad did it feel as, as, as I pressed I, the button? It's like losing an arm. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how bad are you feeling, Juliet? Well, I think that was quite mean because you hadn't actually been naughty. <laughs> 
I think she had. Jess, have you have you ever been naughty? <laughs> Maybe once. That was naughty, you see. So she has been. I think you'll find. A round of applause. Back. You can yeah. take the back to our seat, Chaucer. Uh, Jonathan Price, Juliet Shreve, Abertoise, genius or not? Well, I, I'm deeply conflicted. Uh, hurting bears, yes. <laughs> Scarring children for life, no. <laughs> um, I can't let it happen. Sorry, not genius. Oh. That felt bad. Yeah. <laughs> Are you enjoying your power? I don't know. I think <laughs> I've lost the audience now. No. <laughs> OK, you've seen a few ideas and you've declared a number of them to be genius, but only one of them can be declared tonight's top genius and win the coveted genius trophy. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Beauty, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. And by the way, this isn't just a simple trophy. This is actually the remote control version. I think a look at that. On. Off. I can mute it. Anything. <laughs> Who is going to win it? Choosing between them is going to be tough, so I'm going to give you ten seconds to think about it. But when the genius chime sounds, we are going to need a decision, OK? Jonathan, your time starts now. <laughs> OK, Jonathan, the choices are Nick Woodhead with Scales in Shoes, Penny Davidman and her regional accent weather scheme, and David Bateman with his symmetrical Isle of Wight. Take your time is up, Jonathan. A symmetrical Isle of Wight. Well, there we have it. Congratulations to tonight's top genius, David Bateman from Liverpool, the symmetrical Isle of Wight. My thanks to Jonathan Price for being a genius guest and weatherman, and to all of our contestants tonight, genius or not. And of course, to you for watching. If you think you might be a genius, do get in touch at the genius website, bbc.co.uk slash genius. And as Albert Einstein once said, good night. Hello, me again. Are you a digital viewer? Did you like that? Would you like some more? If you did, press the red button and you can have some extra genius. It's very clever. Coverage of the Masters Golf next Friday means that Genius returns in two weeks' time here on BBC Two. Joining Jonathan Ross for a chat on BBC One shortly, Whoopi Goldberg and Jason Donovan.